Award-winning filmmaker Juan Antonio Bayona has taken the incredible survival story of the 1972 Uruguayan plane crash into the Andes and created a masterful piece of cinema that honors the dead as much as it respects the 16 young men that managed to survive in the harshest of conditions. Welcome, Juan Antonio. Thank you so much. First off, congratulations on an exquisite film and the 13 Goya nominations. Yeah, we, we are very excited. Actually, like... All the head of departments got a nomination. We are super excited. It was such a hard journey, you know, to accomplish that it, it's, a, it's a big reward for all of us. I can only imagine. Well, let's talk a little bit about, because this, this was a mammoth undertaking for you. Uh, can you tell us when you decided to embark on the project and why? Yeah. Actually, I was uh, doing another film, The Impossible, uh, about the tsunami in Thailand when uh, I was researching for that film in pre-production. When uh, Paulo Virthi's book, Society of the Snow, was published in Spain. Um, out of curiosity, and because I like to read about similar themes when I'm preparing a film, I bought the book, I read it, and I was in shock because I, I thought I knew the story. But it was a total different reading. It's a book written 35 years after the plane crash. So it has the weight, the gravitas, of all the time that had passed. It's a non-fiction book because basically are the interviews with the survivors, but it was like, 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 like nothing that I knew before from the story. It was not about the fact. It was more about what they went through uh, from a perspective that felt more spiritual or even philosophical. And in that sense, helped me a lot in The Impossible because it gave me the uh, a very good approach to the inner life of the characters going through a similar situation. Uh, it was a big inspiration. I, actually, I gave the book to all the head of departments of The Impossible, and I was reading uh, pages of the book to Naomi Watts and Tom Holland during the shoot. Uh, and then we, we, I was so obsessed with the story that we had to buy the rights, and, and it's, it, it, it has taken 10 years to get the financing because we wanted to shoot it right. We wanted to shoot it in, in Spanish with Uruguayan accent and with local actors in real locations. You know, it, it, it was a massive thing to do, especially because it was in Spanish and it was not until Netflix showed up that we were able to do it. And you haven't made a film in the Spanish language. It's been about 15 years, right? Yeah, more than that, 16 years. Yes, but I've been trying to do this film for 10 years. But I'm kind of glad now that, that, that it happened now because I think I, I learned a lot on, <laughs> on the way. I think the, the film is a lot better after all, the, uh, after, after all I went through in these last 10 years. I, it's, they say it's always a journey. Uh, I love how the film captured not just the physical and emotional, but also the spiritual journey yeah. of these people. Yeah, I think, you know, that was the big challenge, like how to... How to how to tell that aspect of the book. Because when you adapt a book uh, into a, a script, basically, it's about action and dialogue. So I didn't know how to do that. But it was um, the fact that we're telling the story through a very specific perspective that establishes kind of like a bridge between the living of the dead that somehow I was able to achieve that kind of almost metaphysical approach and spiritual approach to the story. Yeah, and, and uh, the actual survivors were involved in the film. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, from the very beginning. They were always uh, great support. Um, first thing I did was to interview them for a week, uh, for four or five hours, each of them, uh, 15 of them. Uh, and then... Um, I met also the families of the victims of the disease. Uh, we approached them very carefully because I knew that in previous versions uh, they were not they were not really they they were they didn't want to really to make a film about it. So so we had to sit down with them and convince them and tell them what was the new perspective we're trying to tell. And they really liked that. And 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 at the end, all of them, survivors, but also the families of the victims were a great support and a great help. That's amazing. Well, I'm, I'm curious, have you seen the most famous films, the Cardona in 76 yeah. and Frank Marshall's film? 
Yeah, no, I, I saw the Frank Marshall movie when it was released in 1993. Uh, I, I, I never watch it again. Uh, I saw some sequences, uh, but, but never watch it again. And, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to, get, to be influenced by, by the film. And the René Cardona Jr., they, 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 it was very difficult to find. I only found like a very bad copy on, on, on YouTube, and I didn't want to watch it like that. No, I don't blame you. Um, so tell me about the casting process, because you selected virtually uh, unknown actors, at least you know to us, uh, and they all lived pretty much in that. They're all from that area, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they had to be familiar with the story, with the, with the culture, with the country. Um, and I think it was a very good idea that they were all unknown, because at a level of realism to the story, you don't know the faces you... You believe them somehow even more when you know when there's nothing really popular, not any popular face in there. Actually, it, there are not many popular faces at that age. You know, they were 18 uh, to 25, 27. Uh, some of the popular faces uh, did auditions for the film, but I didn't want to have nothing that felt more important than the other ones because that's one of the basic ideas in the story that no one is more important than the other ones. So I decided to go with a cast of unknown people. I think that's how you achieved a, a perfect ensemble. Um, and, and the film show here's something I love. The film shows a different side of masculinity that we're not used to seeing on screen. Uh, can you speak to capturing the intimacy between these men? I love the fact that you asked that question because uh, actually uh, I've been doing all my life, most of my films uh, have a... Um, uh, a woman in the center, you know, you know the the, uh, the impossible, the orphanage, uh, uh, monster calls. Uh, we had Felicity Jones and Sigourney Weaver, um, but uh, these are all basically all were men, you know. And it's very interesting when 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 we shot that scene in the airport where they took a picture of all the passengers. The women are not in that picture. Yeah. Oh. So you, you, you understand that it, it's a very particular idea of masculinity that has to do with Latin America in the 70s. And suddenly, you know, one of the films that influenced me the most while I was preparing this one was uh, A Hidden Life from Terrence Malick. Love that film. Yeah. How the actors touch each other. You know, How the relations between the bodies, you know, which basically, this is what they had to do in the mountain. They had to, they had to, had this level of intimacy. They had to sleep, hugging each other in such a, such a, such such a powerful way. You know, like like like. So th there was no intimacy anymore. You know, uh, and and I thought that was very interesting. Actually, to have Numa in the center, the narrator who is this character that basically wants to be the hero. And the more he wants to be the hero, the more the, the mountain is stopping him. It's like telling him, no, you're going to be the hero, but not that kind of hero, you know? Yeah. He's a guy who needs to learn his, his, his own nature. He needs to under understand and accept his own nature. That is different from the culture he's coming from. He's somebody who needs to learn how to cry. There's a beautiful scene where he needs to cry and he cannot cry because he hasn't, he hasn't been um, raised like that, you know? But that's what the mountain is forcing him, a different idea of, of what is to be a hero, what is to be a man in that situation, you know? And, and I'm very glad that you, that you asked that question because uh, we, we talk a lot with the actors uh, about that on set. And, 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 you know, what it's like to, to have that kind of intimacy, to need that intimacy, and also to realize your own mortality because you're not sure you're going to survive. All of that combined. Exactly. You. It's, not, it's, it's a movie about that. This is, it's a, it's a life-affirming film, but it's a movie also about learn to, learning to die. Some, <laughs> and no one teaches you how to die, you know, because basically no one talks about death. And you cannot talk about life if you don't talk about death. Uh, actually, uh, we did something very interesting in the film. We killed the audience. 
you know that kind of Alfred Hitchcock thing that he he used to say you cannot kill the the, the, the lead character because the audience will feel cheated. But in that situation, people die. Yeah. People die and gave everything they had to the other ones to live in the other ones. And basically, Quite this literally, is, yeah. And literally, this is a visual metaphor that we are doing in the film. We're killing the audience to allow them to leave the, the, the ending of the story through other characters, you know? And I thought that was very interesting, you know? Because that's yeah. exactly the, the, the same situation that we're facing in the mountain. Well, exactly. And, and, you know, that aspect of it, the, the cannibalism aspect, for lack of a better way of putting it, it, it was never done in any way for shock. It was actually done because it was the only way that, you know, they were able to survive and they were giving of themselves. It's, it's exactly. extraordinary. That's the power of film. When you, when you, when you change the point of view and, and, ch and the meaning changes completely, you know? It, it, this was not a film about people that found themselves in the position of eating the, the, the bodies of their friends. It's a movie about people giving their body for their friends in case of in case of necessity, you know. So so it's not about the sensationalism of cannibalism. It's it's, it's about friendship. It's about extreme generosity. It's about camaraderie. It's about love, you know, in a very extreme way. So this was a hundred day shoot for you, which one hundred and forty you know, days of shoot. One hundred and forty. Oh yeah, my God. we were. There was a moment I was counting the days because uh, my longest shoot was the impossible. That was one hundred and twenty. And this was 140. But you know, it it I, I love to have that time. It's 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 it, it gi gives you the time to 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 explore, to give space to the actors to try things, to commit mistakes, to risk uh, ideas, you know, uh, uh, and and to think about what you're doing. You know, uh, it's a movie that we produce ourselves, so we decided where to spend the money, and we decided that. We wanted to shoot it like like that, like like like. I think there's like a sense of real friendship that the cast created uh, in front of camera. That is beautiful how we capture capture it with the camera. You know, like 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 these people, they really become friends. They really become a group, and they're gonna be like that for life. You know, the the kind of adventure they went through. Uh, to uh, for the actors, to me, it's very important to give them similar emotions or experiences. Uh, that the characters are facing in this scene, you know. I really like, for example, to play a lot of music on set because that helps them to understand what is the, um, the mood I'm looking for the scene, you know. Uh, and in this case, I was able to give them the context. I was able to give them the, the, the real locations to experience the cold. Uh, 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 they went through a strict diet, so they experienced the hunger. They were very far away from home because we shot in Spain. Uh, and they had all their families and girlfriends in Argentina or, or Uruguay. So they had this, also this feeling of isolation, you know, that made the work harder for them, but easier to get to, to that level that I was looking for in terms of the performance. Mm. Was, there, was there a moment, or a, a, it's hard to say a day, but was there some moment where you, you thought to yourself, okay, this is... This is what I, I'm achieving what I want to achieve here. Yeah, and that's beautiful. When, when you're able to, to get that, is the, 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 the best reward possible. And most of the times it's something related to the performances, to the actors, you know? I, I'm gonna tell you one example, one, one of the examples. It's at the very end, when they came back, um, after spending 72 days in the mountain and they created this strong group, uh, they were separated in the hospital. Each of them had to be in a, in a different room, uh, which was a shock for them after spending so much time together. <laughs> this kind of relation, the way they, 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 the intimacy they had in the, in the plane, suddenly they felt alone, you know. Uh, I remember that I, 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 I asked the survivors to, to send me an email, each of them telling me what they did in, in the hospital. You know, and one of them, Roy, Roy Harley, told me that his father was all the time with him, all the time. There was a moment that he took a shower. There were two nurses helping him to because he couldn't stand. He was so thin that he, and so so weak that he couldn't stand by himself. So two nurses helped him to get a shower, 
and his father was there waiting <laughs> for him with a towel, you know. And I thought that was a that was a, um, a beautiful image. But instead of only shooting that, we did the whole take. We 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 did the the whole shower, and then uh, we did the moment where the father. Uh, embraces the kid with the towel and takes care of him. Uh, he dresses up his hair. He cuts his uh, his nail tools. You know, like like it was a very 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 long take. And at the very at the very end of that take, you can see the actor. You can see his face. You can see how he's calmed, like uh, like like hugging his father. And then. I saw his hand and his and his hand is shaking. And I asked the camera, the camera operator, like slowly go there and finish the scene in that in that shot. And that that moment tells me that even though he's back home, he's with his father, he feels safe, he's still in the mountain, you know? And and, and that's something that that you need to spend the time. You need to spend uh you need to do that long take. You need to have an actor who has gone through all that journey in order to get that moment, you know? And when you get that, it's the most rewarding thing as a filmmaker, as a director, you know? Like like, like being able to tell all that depth in a single detail, you know, that's, that's the most yeah. rewarding thing that you can, you can have as a director. Astonishing, wow. Um, Tell me about uh, being Spain's Oscar submission and what that means to you. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like so grateful to my colleagues in Spain because I've been so far away from home in the last eight years. I, 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 I was in Hollywood doing uh, all the films and, and I, I've been trying to do this film for a long time and finally being able to go back home and, and shoot the film with my people, uh, and being chosen to represent Spain in the Oscars is a huge privilege. Also the fact that I think that all the head of department did such an extraordinary job. You know, cinematography, makeup, visual effects, uh, uh, the sound is incredible. You know, I'm so happy for all of them that the fact to have the, 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 the movie now being here in, in, in LA, talking about the film, showing the film, and showing what the, all, all the people did in the film, it's to me a, a, a already a, a big reward. I, I want to ask a final question um, about reaction to the film. I was uh, in New York for the Newhouse screening where Enzo and Eduardo and, and you were yeah. there. And uh, it's funny because when the film was over, I know a lot of us couldn't move. We really just, <laughs> you know, the, the, so what, what have you um, gotten from audiences so far? Yeah, well, you know, you know, we have thirteen minutes of credits, and no one, no one stood up <laughs> during the credits. You know, everybody stayed. You know, uh, you know, there's a, there's a line at the end that says, "Each of you is an answer." You know, we were looking for answering the big question. You know, while we were exploring the film, and at the end, the, each of you is an answer. Each of you is a reason to keep fighting. It's a reason to, to. Uh, it's, it's an invitation to get your own interpretation because how am I going to tell you what's the meaning of life? You know, I, I will never be able to do so, but I can invite you to think about it. And this is, I think, what happens at the end of the film. It, it's, uh, it, it transcends the story, a very popular story, to talk about each of you and, and, and invites the audience to, to think about themselves to appreciate life in a different way. That's, that's exactly what, what happened to me when I met all these people, the survivors, you know, I, 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 I had a different perspective. I, had a, I have a different perspective on life now that I met them, you know. And I think the movie invites the audience also to, to, to think about themselves. And, 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 it's, and in that sense, it, I think it, 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 it's kind of like a transformative experience, you know. I think very much so. Um, Juan Antonio, I want to thank you for taking the time uh, to speak with me and for giving us, honestly, I think this film is a gift and it, it's certainly one of my favorite films of the year. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.